Hi everyone, this is Anka Metcalf with TradeOutloud.com and this is the Futures Market Outlook for the week starting with January 14, 2019. Let's begin with the E-mini Dow. This is the monthly chart. Uh, this uh, week's activity and in fact these first uh, 11 days of activity have been quite bullish for uh, the markets in general and we had a pretty bold move uh, from the December lows. Uh, now the price is nearing again the 20 SMA onto the monthly chart. What this means is that it's going to reach a decision point. Now for the last three trading sessions, trading has been a little rough because it has been moving back and forth, back and forth multiple times, and it has been having a pretty wide swing. So from about 23,700 back into the uh, 24,000s, just back and forth is just creating this pendulum effect. Now, whether this is going to be the digestion effect of these prior lows that were set from the volatility that started last year, and this is February of, of last year, and throughout this uh, whole spring session all the way into March. So we had a very turbulent zone. As you can see here, we pretty much have maintained the uptrend and managed to rotate higher into September. And then October came with uh, the, the big volatility. We have marked that October 29th low, and then we started to rotate back up and December came in with a retest back here into the 21,500, which is also in the vicinity of the 34 SMA. Now the price is caught uh, right here into this prior resistance, into this price support that now becomes resistance for current price action. So what this means is that we have a confluence zone right here at 24, uh, this can actually mean two things, and two things can uh, happen at this price point. We either digest this area, creating the sand pendulum effect, three to four, three to four hundred points back and forth, back and forth. Uh, we've gotten used, in, used to this volatility from this year, and then we could actually uh, try to break through this 24,000, 24, uh, 24,000, 2450, and actually start propelling higher and eating some more of this resistance uh, to the left-hand side and actually trying to rotate a little bit higher. The second thing that can happen is that once the price is testing and retesting the 24,000, it can actually turn around at this point. And for this reason, I wanna put in the weekly chart here. So you can see that we had a pretty strong reversal on the week starting with December 24th. Uh, we had a continuation higher going into the end of the year, a lot of optimism coming back into the market. This was the first time that we were actually testing these prior support levels right now, minor resistance levels. Uh, the price had a continuation higher through this uh, last week, and you could see that right now we're exactly into, into a very strong confluence here into a 24,000 uh, level. And this is the area that I'm referring to. We either stabilize here at 24,000 and pop hard, and we do have a tradable void in this case, all the way to the 24,800. So this is going to have a lot of fluidity, a lot of really nice price velocity that can be developed into this uh, pressure, uh, pressure to the upside. This is going to be, so if 24,000 is not gonna represent any impediments for price for a continuation higher, and if the price is gonna try to lock in this high and try to push higher through next week, then we can expect uh, actually a fulfillment of this tradable void all the way to the 24,800 uh, and even more back into this top of the chop here where we have another confluence zone uh, and we're very close to uh, 25,000. So it can actually have a pretty uh, a good velocity range for about a thousand points to the upside. And this is uh, the imini doubt. Now let's take it uh, a notch lower here. Uh, uh, let's take it a bit lower here and let's see what the daily is suggesting. All right, so this is Let's zoom in. This is pretty much the candle that we have set on uh, last Friday. Uh, and as you can see, one, two, three attempts to react to this prior pivot right here. So we're digesting this resistance at 24,000. This to me looks more of a digestion than anything else. And it looks like a lot of pressure can be released to the upside, at least into the 24,450. Now, don't forget that. 
uh, this week we actually are starting earning season earning season gap season this is the most active season for day traders for swing traders it's where all the action is coming from and the first six weeks are going to be one of the most important things of this quarter now if we have the velocity and if we try to close a little bit ab above this 24 uh 24 um, um i would say 24020 level then we can actually propel higher into the 24 uh, 400 at least um, now it's not going to be an easy ride because this is a definitely going to be a decision point let's move on to the hourly chart and let's see what we can expect at the beginning of the trading session and this is no longer than sunday at 6 p.m eastern so let's move on here okay as you can see, remember when I started the uh, when I started this uh, uh, this recording, I've been mentioning the fact that we have meander we have been meandering uh, within this range for about three days. We have move higher, pull back, move higher, shallow pull back uh, here, and then steeper pull back in the uh, uh, London session uh into friday and then the newer trading session took the price back up into these prior highs so we really want to get into that twenty-four thousand uh level once again uh one thing that i noticed within everything that we see here on the chart is that we have a stable support level into the 23 400 not only from these prior uh, prior pivot highs but also from the 200 sma that is coming in and closing in on price which is actually really good for a continuation higher uh, we also have since we have developed the low into december we we have actually made higher lows one uh two three four five actually we have the sixth higher low right here promoting a continuation higher of this new established uptrend that we have onto the hourly charts uh, if we if the price is ready to explode over 24,000 this is going to be a really really nice uh, move that may continue for set of, for actually about 400 points uh, and it has the velo it may have the velocity to continue for about 400 points so we can expect uh, either a continuation into the first uh, first second or third day continuation higher uh, or we could see a really big day monday or tuesday even pre-earnings so that will uh, remain to be decided now the bear case in case if we are going to break below 23 600 i'm still not going to be overly bearish because we can still talk about uh we can still talk about pullback buys because this is a very hefty level of support and that other level of support is going to be at 23 400 zone so around give or take about 30 to 40 points around this level so if we're going to try to maintain this level here we could actually see a rotation back to the upside from the 23 400 once again so things are going to happen very quickly once earning season starts uh we have uh, the uh dyn we can expect some very dynamic moves either to the upside or to the downside so we have to be prepared on both facets of the coin all right so this is uh the m and &E doubt let's move on to the m and &E s&p 500 and we're gonna take it all the way to the monthly chart and uh, as you can see here, the monthly chart pretty much similar to the Imini &E Dow. So we're closing in on 2,600. Uh, currently, the price closed on Friday at 2,595.5, uh, and it's clo it has closed strongly. Look at the close right here. Uh, first of uh, 12, the uh, first 12 days have been really, really strong. So we still have. Uh, we still have the support level tapping onto the 50 SMA uh, and we have a closing and, and the price was literally started to initiate the price velocity for higher initiated at the 34 uh, simple moving average and it is pushing higher and it's really into this area of resistance from that October low. So now we're trying to either digest the October lows or and move higher or we're gonna the price is gonna get rejected and we're gonna come back down uh, let's take it to uh, let's take it to the weekly charts weekly charts as you can see right here we pulled in onto the weekly in December oops sorry about that let me just uh, regain my cursor all right so we regained the 200 SMA and actually moved a little bit higher 
okay? So we moved a little bit higher. We moved higher right into this 10 exponential moving average, very close to the 200, uh, very, uh, very close to the 2600 level. Again, digesting this prior turbulence zone that we had from February all the way into May before we started to uptrend higher and establish a new high. So right now the question is, are these earnings going to be enough to push this market higher to push the indices higher and if they get this push higher i think that we can easily achieve 2700 into this level here all right let's move on to the daily chart let me just erase some of uh, some of the drawings that i had on the charts okay so we can have a clearer image of the price action all right so we have the 2316 uh low uh, the price was trading well below the moving averages. The moving averages were fanning out, sign that we were getting uh, we were getting pressure uh, to move to the downside. Uh, we also have bottomed out on December 26th and moved a little bit higher, pulled back. We, I love this little hook that is happening here, and it, I see this happen very often onto minor time frames. Uh, after an advanced decline, the price is really not giving up. The bulls are not giving up. Their, uh, they're up for the fight and they're pushing the price higher. Now we're trading above. Uh, we're trading above the 20 SMA. Uh, and we're trying, and again, for the first time in, in a very long time, we were closing above. And I like the way the price is cradled here by this uh, 34 SMA into the 2590 zone. Now we still have pressure, but right now this area, the 2585, now and basically it's going to be give or take about five to six points. So we're going to speak about the 2580 zone. 2580 zone is going to become our area of support moving forward. So we have a hefty area of support, 2580, and we could actually ro see a rotation higher back into this prior cluster high. It's going to be a bit more turbulent in the M&E S&P than, uh, than uh, uh, in YM. But I think one of the things that may create the a fluidity to the upside may be actually the earnings. Don't forget that the mini S&P is financial rich and we're going to start with financials that will uh, that uh, with uh, financial earnings next week. Uh, let's move on to the hourly chart. The hourly chart also progression higher just like the mini Dow. We've had a low into December and we're starting to make higher lows all the way uh, all the way into uh, yes all the way into Friday's uh, low uh, that was established into 10 o'clock 10 o'clock reversal time bam took the price higher and we're closing in back into this 26 uh, back into the 2600 level if we break above this 26 level then we can actually propel higher and we saw from the daily chart that we have room for a continuation higher back into the 26 20 26 24 and even into the 26 36 level so this is this is very this is a very bullish range that we're having right now and the price is ready to tackle new highs uh it's going to be very interesting and like i said due to the fact that we have a pretty considerable void uh overhead we can actually have one or two big days uh, or we can have the price stabilizing at this level uh going into earnings uh because uh we really need to see uh, the price needs that confirmation whether to move higher or lower. So we either are going to get a big move, bold move into the first two to three days, or uh, the price is just going to create this pendulum effect back and forth, back and forth uh, until uh, we start our earning season. All right, let's move on to NASDAQ. And uh, we're going to take it, obviously, to the monthly chart. Monthly chart, it's, uh, monthly chart has closed right below the 20 simple moving average. Really nice digestion of these prior lows. This is the December low. Tapping onto the 34 SMA, moving higher. So erasing, uh, erasing the 34, pushed higher. Now the question is, is it going to have enough strength to continue higher? And based on this release over, uh, over the 66.35, 66.40 area, 
it has uh, it has more room back into the uh, 6830 and more let's move on to the weekly charts weekly charts we closed very strong this is a very very strong wrapped up week you can see the solid green bar right here and we pretty much closed at the vicinity of the 10 exponential moving average digesting these prior lows right here that we've tackled this week and it was um it wasn't a very easy week to trade but if you're taking a step back and looking at higher time frames even though the risk is greater on the higher time frames you could have a more accurate read so it had a really nice digestion of these prior highs now the question is uh, does Nasdaq have the strength to continue forward uh, into um, into this really nice tradable void back into the uh, 6950? So you, we can see that we're going into next week set up for a bullish move because we had a really close strong on Friday. We had a really strong close of the week and we can expect a continuation higher, not unless you know earnings are going to get in the way again th the way they did actually uh the way they did in last quarter so um this is the tradable void that i'm looking for uh for a continuation higher all right let's move on to the daily chart daily chart as you can see we're creating the pendulum effect within the last three trading days we're trying to uh, erase the 6640 and 6650 level this is going to be a highly turbulent level once the price is going to start closing above the 6690 we could have a really nice tradable void all the way back into the 68 uh, 6830 and then possible continuation higher over 7,000. So 7,000 is going to be that nice tradable void. So all we need to do is digest the 66.50 to 66.70 area, close above 66.70, and then we can have a progression higher. Now, the more the price is going to reside in this area, and you can see that one, two, three days, we pretty much have stabilized between 65.50 and 6640 this this is the range right now if we explode to the upside like i said we have really nice tradable voids all the way to 68 6800 6850 and back into the uh, uh back into the 7000 now what does this mean okay now that we know what the bigger image is for the swing trader let's get into the day trader time frame so what are the day traders gonna going to be watching for this upcoming week uh, it's obvious that we're having an established uptrend onto the hourly chart. So we have the low from December and then we continue to mark higher lows and higher highs. Uh, the new high rotation happened at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, big reversal time in the market uh, and the price moved higher. Now, one thing that uh, one thing that, you know, um, I wanted to mention is that we did have a little bit of lag into um, into NASDAQ into um, Friday's trading session. So it wasn't that strong. And it was actually the only index that you could see here that actually closed into uh, that closed into the red. Uh, even though it closed into the, the red, it really followed the rest of the indices. One of the most powerful indices that we had uh, chart pattern wise uh, was actually the Dow and the Yemeni S&P and of course, Russell. Uh, but uh, I do like the chart structure better and Dow was reacting chart intraday chart pattern in the mini Dow was way stronger even than Russell's uh, chart Russell before it in actually initiated the breakout. All right, so uh, the continuation higher, we need to break over the 40s in order to continue higher. We do have the higher highs and higher lows, but we pretty much stopped here um, all the way into the 40s, between 40 and 45. Uh, we had a high here into Wednesday, lower high, lower high, but we never, uh, never came in with a lower low here. So as long as we're talking about these higher highs, I cannot look back and think bearish. I just have to look positive and I have to look for the positive price action reaction above these prior pivot highs. So for the intraday trader, as long as these lows are going to be holding at 65.70, these this is going to be the line in the sand. I wouldn't attempt shorting into this area uh, at least uh, into at least going into uh, Sunday and into Monday. We have to see that the 65.70 is holding and we also have to see this uh, 65. 6550, which is a big benchmark for NASDAQ at this level. All right, let's continue with Russell and uh, let's uh, go to the weekly chart, to the monthly charts, I'm sorry. Monthly charts erasing more than half of December, uh, December red uh, bar, uh, but we're closing in onto these resistance 
resistance levels right here. And this is the October low, the 1457. The fact that we're trading over 14, uh, uh, 1400 here, nearing into this of, of actually uh, getting into on Friday, we tested the 1450, which was, uh, which was a really solid, uh, strong close on it. We can expect a continuation higher, but again, there's gonna be turbulence at the 1460 level. And this is from the monthly chart. Weekly charts, uh, we closed above the 10 exponential moving average, very strong and bold move. Now don't forget, 56, 57 is gonna come with a little bit of turbulence. And then once we escape through the 60 level, so we are still gonna have about 10 points of meandering and chop, but once we escape through this level, I think that not only that we're gonna get straight into the 1400, but we may have a case of uh, uh, of uh, retesting these prior highs from October and November back into the 1538. Uh, let's go to the hourly, uh, I'm sorry, let's go to the daily chart and the daily chart stronger than the Dow, than ES and NASI and uh, actually coming very close uh, into this 50 SMA, but you can see here a bit closer because we've actually we've actually seen a much more aggressive, uh, a much more aggressive move from these lows and continuing higher rather than a range of retest of the prior lows. Right now, the price, look to the left-hand side into the October 26th. This is resistance zone. We either digest this area and push higher or the price is gonna get rejected and we may actually have to uh, see prior price action. I was looking for my cursor. Okay, we ha we can actually see a, a prior reaction, uh, like something that we've witnessed into December uh, again. So I'm not gonna be overly bearish. I don't think this is gonna be the development of a bearish move just yet. Okay, just yet, but uh, time will tell. But here's what I can see moving and what I'm preparing my trading plan for next week is that if we are going to have a push over 15 or over 1450, we're definitely gonna move higher back into 1500. So that's gonna give me about a 50 point move. Uh, whether you're swing trading or day trading, this is the type of this is the type of uh, um, of advance that I see happening in, happen in this market. Now, if we get a pullback, we're gonna watch very closely, uh, um, uh, very closely these uh, daily reversals. So, if the price is gonna push below and it's gonna close below uh, uh, 1420 then it may have some room into the 1400, but I think this is going to be the area for the other rotation between 1400 and 1375. So if even if we get a pullback, I think that this pullback may be shallow. Now, obviously we're, uh, we're gonna be in full swing earnings season, and I think that earnings are gonna have a say, but the way the, uh, the chart patterns are trading right now and the way the price action is uh, reacting right now, it's reacting rather bullish. All right, uh, so um, like I've mentioned before, a push over 1450, it's gonna push, uh, it's gonna actually propel the market higher. Uh, I would be a little bit more bearish only if we uh, uh, close below uh, 1420. Other than that, I'm not gonna discuss the bearish uh, case right now, and I'm gonna be updating you guys uh, on, um, uh, on these moves as we move along. Let's uh, move into oil and I'm gonna go to the monthly chart. We're closing in on a monthly rotation and this monthly rotation is gonna come over 50, uh, uh, 54, 55. Still very early, uh, we're only like uh, uh, two weeks into, uh, into the month, uh, but it's working really hard on this uh, solid uh, reversal off of the $42 zone. Now, uh, weekly chart. We closed a very strong weekly chart, but now the price is uh, the price has closed this week below this 200 SMA and below uh, the 10 exponential. So strong resistance here developed into the 52 level, pushed the price a little bit lower. We did have the snap to the upside into the prior resistance from December 10 and the pullback a little bit lower here. Uh, what we can expect moving forward, daily chart rejection here, uh, we either stabilize and I could see probably a pullback into the 50 to 50, 50 level um, and uh, a rotation from that point on. But we're left with the topping tail right here, uh, pretty much a base. Uh, 
normally, normally this would suggest, uh, this would suggest more of a continuation lower back into the $50. Um, the fact that on Friday, we actually crossed below and we actually pretty much revisited uh, the Thursday low right here. And it, we came in a little bit, we've tested the 51.18, as you can see here, so we're uh, a 51.18. Uh, we may see a further continuation lower. So things are going to be very tricky. I'm going to go to the hourly chart. Uh, now, here's support, okay? Here's support into the 5150 zone. Uh, we're pretty much the range is between, we have the lows uh, right above $51, and this is going to be the ballpark area. What I think is going to happen, is, and I'm going to go to the four-hour chart, I think that if we're going to uh, actually move above 52.32, we're actually gonna restart the move higher because on the four hour chart, we're st we still have a double bottom at 51.18 and the price has closed, I would say pretty okay here, trying to regain the 20 SMA. Uh, we're still below the 10 uh, exponential moving average, but I think the line of the sand is going to be crossing over these highs that represent also um, these highs right here from uh, from early Thursday. Uh, and from the hourly chart, like I said, move a step uh, a step back into the four hour for a little bit more clarity because things are very choppy, still very strong, even though the price is trading below the moving averages, they're, they're still holding on to the support uh, from last Thursday. Uh, let's move on to gold. Uh, gold has been meandering between 12, I'm gonna go to the daily chart right here, has been meandering between 1280 and 1300, and it has been back and forth, back and forth many, many times. We're left with a big top topping tail right here. We're trying to revisit the 10 exponential moving average, uh, and it's it's a rather uh, choppy, very, very choppy uh, trading environment. So if we cross below, so the way I see it, uh, we may have we may have a buy into the 1280 zone. We may have a buy into the 1280 zone with the possible two to three point stop. Uh, if we cross below that 1280 low, and if we're seeing selling pressure, this can be a sell at the 1277, pushing lower back into the 70s. Okay, so shorter term traders, even longer term traders, this can be a, a, a real, uh, uh, you know, kind of like a fast swing to the downside. Doji here suggests that we're very neutral. If we break above 1300, we're actually going to move higher, 13, uh, 1312, 1325, and maybe a little bit higher. But if we cross below the 1277 level, then we're going to come in. Okay, and we may even retest the 70s and even the 65 level, all right? This is all for today. Thanks so much for joining. And uh, if you like what you hear, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, this way you're gonna receive notifications every single time we have a video up. Thanks so much, guys. Have a wonderful week. And don't forget that we have a class that is starting, uh, actually starting the last week of December. It is the Power Income Futures uh, Day Trading, and we're throwing in the swing trading class for free. If you want more information, you can visit us at info at tradeoutloud.com and request more information about the class. We're happy to send you the class curriculum and uh, any information or even uh, actually accommodate a 15-minute free consultation with you. Thanks so much for joining, guys. Have a wonderful and profitable trading week, and I'll see you next week with a new market update.